Hi there, welcome to Adding Crash Remote Shell. In the previous section, we used Spring Boot's DevTools module to enhance the developer experience. In this section, we're going to take advantage of Spring Boot's embedded instance of Crash, the remote shell. In this section, we'll first take a quick tour through Crash Remote Shell and find out what's provided out of the box. And then we'll try out writing a couple custom commands. In this video, we're going to take a quick tour of the Crash Remote Shell. We'll see how to add it to any Spring Boot project. Then we'll SSH into it and finally take a peek at the various built-in commands. Now to use Crash Remote Shell, you need to, in let's go into our build file here. You need to include the Spring Boot Starter Remote Shell dependency. Now you notice how we already have it here. That's because at the beginning of this course, when we were picking out our options at start.spring.io, we selected Remote Shell off the list. So if you're starting a new project, that's easy. If you've already got a Spring Boot project, this is all you need to do to add this remote shell that we're going to go dig through in this section. Let's go ahead and start the app. Now, maybe you've noticed in the, some of our past courses and, and videos that we've been recording that this little random th uh, note passes by here, and maybe you didn't look at it very closely. It says, using default password for shell access. Essentially, every time this app starts, it generates a random password, and this is our password to get into the Crash Remote Shell. So I'm going to copy it into my clipboard, and then let's switch over to the console and actually try it out. Now, by default, Spring Boot runs the embedded Crash server on port 2000, or it listens on port 2000 for SSH access. There's a default uh, username of user, uh, and that and the password are overridable. It's prompting us, and we can now type in that password. And we're in. Now, right away, it tells us what version of Spring Boot that this app is running in. We can type help and get a list of some immediate commands here. Now, uh, several of these commands are provided out of the box from Crash, uh, but some of them are also registered from Spring Boot. Right at the top, we can see that uh, auto configuration report. And if we type it, we can get a similar printout here. We can also look up the beans of the application that are registered in the application context. Uh, it's a bit condensed here, but uh, something we can digest. Uh, here's a neat one, endpoint. Let's go look up endpoint. Now when I type that, it actually shows me that there's a couple subcommands to type. Now, if I list the endpoints, it's going to show me the various Spring Boot actuator endpoints that we've been looking at in this volume. And I can actually invoke one of these endpoints. For example, what about the metrics endpoint? This gives me all the metrics in a particular format. Or perhaps a uh, dump endpoint. This can dump the state of our system out so we can peek at it. There is a command built in here for doing straight up metrics. If we want to type that, now we get a self-updating. It's polling the system about once a second to track the metrics on that. And you notice it's displayed in a nice uh, terminal user interface. Let me hit Control C to get out of that. And there's support for other things. If you configure Crash with SMTP settings, you can actually uh, gather this information and ship it out in an email message. We're not going to do that today, but uh, it's something to go check out. Now here's the big one. Let's finish it off and run their dashboard command. Now this is just plain cool. At the top, it's actually tapping one of the commands to show the current thread status. So it's listing all the threads and it's polling it periodically. In the bottom left corner, we can see a printout of our environment variable, specifically the Java parameters that it's using. Uh, in the center, we can look at our environment settings that happen to be supplied inside Crash here, and we can see some attributes like spring.beanfactory, spring.version, spring.boot.version. And to the right, we get some information about the JVM. These are actually some different uh, memory pools, such as heap space, non-heap space, etc. Then I can hit Q for quit. 
Now, did you know that you can actually look up many of those commands in, from within the IDE? Let's go over there and check it out. Now, you notice the last command we typed was dashboard. If we actually look for dashboard.groovy, we're going to find it inside the crash.shell uh, object. Let's shrink the console down. What you're going to notice here is a little UI builder building up tables with, with headers and, and labels and rows and all this kind of stuff to lay out some stuff. So this is a nice little tour on how to go in and possibly write our own custom commands. But we're actually going to dig in and write some real commands in the next video. So in this video, we took a little tour of Crash the Remote Shell Toolkit and we checked out various built-in commands. There were some that came from Crash, some that were added by Spring Boot.